then face the cross towards the back. We welcome you this morning. Uh, our liturgy, our whole service is printed in your bulletin where you can follow along. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Bob Clifton, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In his baptism, Bob was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, he shall be clothed with glory. Thanks be to God. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection of life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, together as we enter, let us all say together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Bob. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until, by your call, we are reunited with the, those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to open up your hymnals to 785, 785, a peace like a river.
You may be seated. At this time, um, I'm going to invite Bob's children forward. Uh, we have a time to share um, thoughts and memories of Bob, um, and then we're going to open it up to anyone here who would like to, to share um, uh, a memory you have. <laughs> had to do this before. Um, to know my dad was to love him. I, I just want to thank you all for being here for him. After mom died, dad was a bit lost. So the first thing he did was he started going to the coffee clutch every morning with the guys over at McDonald's in Pataskala. And then he came back, started going back to church. And somebody, one of you, said, we need you in our, our group, our senior saints or the men's chorus. I don't remember which. So that was another thing that he, he joined in on. And then, of course, he had to go to the pubs on Friday nights. <laughs> all these things and I'm sure I've forgotten something I don't know but thank you all you all kept him alive and gave him purpose and gave him something to do and without that we wouldn't have kept him as long as we did so thank you I look out over this gathering and um, I recall a time when dad was an assistant scout master and um, likewise I was a cub master uh, kind of paying it forward and, and fear of public speaking um, if you can talk to parents uh, you've got it whipped uh, so paying it forward I, I gather that lesson um, Dad was not only leader, uh, by example, uh, he was also an educator. Um, when I was younger, much younger, we lived on Ivanhoe Drive, and um, much of the custom of the day, um, the men of the neighborhood, at least half of them, did their own oil changes on their cars, and they did tune-ups on their cars from a bygone era, it seems, today. but. Um, I was eye to eye with the top of the radiator on dad's car and I couldn't see what he was doing. So um, he could tell that I was straining to stand on my tiptoes and look into the motor compartment where he was working and uh, uh, I was playing with his tools and well, you know, that's all sorts of dread on dad's part. So to keep me busy um, and to pay it forward, I'm sure for him. Um, he lifted me up and placed my feet on the bumper of the car and my hands on the uh, rim of the motor compartment. And there he showed me um, how to replace points, how to gap, um, set the gap and dwell on the points, how to replace spark plug wires, how to gap the spark plugs. Um, so in that way, he took his love and uh, educated me on those vitally important skills back then. Um, and uh, when he came to Columbus, uh, he was a apprentice tool and die maker. He came from uh, Hawthorne Plant, Western Electric, um, and he was able to continue his apprenticeship here um, at the General Electric Men plant here uh, in Reynoldsburg. Um, so he continued to educate. Um, I also learned how to operate a lathe because we had one in our garage. Um, I learned to use every machine tool um, that he had learned uh, and paid it forward with me and his apprentices. Um, I 
I have a lot to live up to, and uh, I'm going to pay it forward. We all hope that each one of us will take the lessons forward that we've learned from him. Thank you for coming. You know, they say of all, you know, all great men that, that they, well, he put his pants on one leg at a time. Um, Dad didn't. He could put his pants on both legs at the same time. Uh, we've seen him do it. <laughs> like, witness. So, gosh, I, I have to say that anything, all that is good about me, it comes from him and mom and the mom that he went halfway around the world to find and, and he took care of and he took care of us. Such an awesome protector, provider, counselor, and partner in crime and, and all sorts of adventures. He just always told us to go do everything you think you want to do, learn what you want to do, you know, anything that you put in your head, you know, that's not going to be taken away from you. And uh, so I've tried to live up to that. There were some times in my life as many of us, I guess, that went to places that you shouldn't have gone with people with that I shouldn't have been hanging out with and did things that I shouldn't have been doing. And I, uh, of course, things caught up with me as they do, you know, sometimes. And, and uh, so I, there was a point in my life where I just decided, hey, you know, when I'm out there, you know, Dad was with me, and that was that. What I just knew that would keep me on the straight and narrow, because he always did the right thing. Not to say that he didn't goof up. We all do, but I mean, he—if he goofed up, he'd fix it. And but as far as his intent, the man was an angel, and I really, I am so proud to be his child and uh, you know I guess just remember all of you this man put his pants on both legs at the same time <laughs> okay. I'm a big mush but I'm gonna miss him and um, A smile on his face is probably Pat's blue ribbon. <laughs> if there's anyone else who would like to speak, we'll take a, a couple minutes. You can come. Um, if, if you know you'd like to, to come, you can come stand uh, towards the bottom of the stairs. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bob Lockmeyer, and I am part of that coffee clutch at McDonald's every morning that Susan was talking about. I've got to tell you a, a quick story about how I met Bob. I didn't, know him, I didn't know him very long, but he became a very good friend. It was shortly after his wife passed away in 2014 that I joined the Army Security Agency reunion group that, uh, from Korea. And um, uh, he had a very good friend up in Michigan who he served with back in the 1950s. Uh, to digress a minute, Bob was in the Army about a, 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 a decade before I was, so. But anyway, I was sitting at watching my television one day, and on caller ID came up a R. Clifton. And I'm thinking, I don't know any R. Clifton, but it had a 927 phone number. So I picked up the phone, and the first thing I hear is, ASA Korea! And then uh, that was Bob Clifton, so we got to talking, and he had told me that he had just recently lost his wife. And we got to talking a little bit and found out that he worked for Lucent. And I don't want to take credit for it, but I, I, I invited him to come over to that coffee clutch on, in, at McDonald's in the morning 
And because I said, you know, there's a bunch of guys that come to that in the morning and you might know some of them. So he started coming. And as I said, we became very good friends. He's the one that got me into the American Legion. He invited me to come and join the American Legion. So I want to thank everyone for coming. And that's just a little bit of a, a story that I know about Bob. Thank you. Good morning, my name's Penny Killalay, and um, I'll apologize if I get emotional. I um, only knew Bob for a short time through the American Legion also, but he was such a blessing to our group, and we were gonna truly miss him. Um, a story I'd like to share is that one of our duties as American Legion is to um, provide the honor guard for the Pataskala um, Street Fair Parade in August every year. And just a few, I, I'm not sure what year it was, but it was here in, you know, just the last couple of years, Bob wanted to be a part of that honor guard. Instead of riding on the float, he chose, I'm sure he had been in his 80s at that point, to march in the honor guard. And he made that whole parade route. And we were all so proud of him. And I'm just, we're going to truly miss him. Thank you. Well, I'm Jim McIntyre. Um, I was a really good friend of Bob. I've known him about four years or so. And uh, they have a lot in common. You know, both married to Japanese, have Japanese children. When I first met him, he just took me right in. Uh, I lost my father about a decade ago, so I had that void in my life. And Bob helped fill that void back again. Uh, spent a lot of quality time with him. Go over to his house, drink his warm beer with him. <laughs> but we, I, I, I cherish those times. Just sitting here, a little wooden bench out by his garage area, and we just sit there and drink his warm beer and just talk about life. And he always brought up Hidako. I, that name is sticking in my mind forever. He's every time you talk to him. If you talk to him more than ten minutes, you're going to hear that word. Hidako, that's his beloved wife he missed dearly. And when my son was working on his Eagle Scout project, he was very supportive of that project. And part of the project, he had to he build a cannon. And the contractor to build a cannon is way out in Missouri. So we had to go all the way out there to pick the cannon up. And it kept getting delayed and delayed. And so finally, the guy called us up and said, hey, we I want you to pick that cannon up like right now. We're like, well, we can't just drop everything and run out there. So the guy that volunteered to go out there, he's busy that weekend. And I remember Bob volunteered. He said, if you need help, let me know. So it was a Friday morning. I called him up and said, hey, Bob, I need some help. And that guy's demanding we come and get that cannon like right now. He's like, okay, let's go. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so that's Friday morning, Saturday morning. Go over to Bob's house and... He's already got the trailer loaded up and everything, and off we go to Missouri. So I really cherished that time. I spent a lot of time with him in his van. That he loved to travel, and the whole time he talked about how he used to drive in that van, pulling their little camper, and his kids were small, and how they just go to all the national parks and just all over the place in that van. So that's just another time I really cherished with him. And... Um, I said, every time you go over to his house, he's sitting there ready to go, drinking his beer, and I sit there, I finish the beer with him, and then we go do whatever we're going to do. I mean, if anybody needed a trailer pulled or a pick up a safe or whatever, he was always there. <laughs> so, so I'm really going to miss him. Um, I know we're all going to miss him. And I'm just glad my son got to, got to know him a little bit. So God bless you, Bob. Uh, hi, my name is Bill Baker. Um, the Cliftons and a few of the other people here know me as Butch. Um, I'm a classmate of, of Dick's uh, and a schoolmate of you know, his siblings. 
and they were also our neighbors. They, they lived, I don't know, was it about 60 yards down the street, 70 yards, and down around the corner. And uh, I keep hearing the name Bob. I don't know Bob. For me, he will always be Mr. Clifton. And, you know, I know you're, you reach a certain age and you're supposed to be able to call a person by their first name. You know, your teacher that you had in high school is no longer Mr. Cox. It's, hey, Bill, how you doing? You know, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to think of other, Ken for our coach. Well, it's no longer Coach Ash, it's now it's Ken. Well, no, for me, it's always going to be Coach Ash, Mr. Cox, Mr. Clifton. And uh, he gave me a really, uh, one day, I, I don't know what we were talking about, but he gave me one of the best pieces of advice I ever got. And he was describing his trip to Japan on a troop ship. This was, when he went to Japan, there wasn't any long range aircraft. Uh, so you, know, you had to take a troop ship to wherever you were going if you were in the army. And he said that an old sailor told him, if you want to avoid getting seasick, keep a full stomach. And I thought, oh, okay, that doesn't kind of make sense, but. So years later, I was in ROTC, Naval ROTC at Ohio State, and I was on my summer cruise between my freshman and sophomore year. And the ship I was assigned to was trying to leave Subic Bay during the middle of a typhoon. Needless to say, the ship's rocking and rolling pretty well, and I'm trying to avoid getting sick. So I was waiting for them to announce that the galley was open because I was going to go get that full stomach. And as soon as they announced it, oh, I was trying to get to be first in line. But you know what? I filled my stomach and I felt better. And I, you know, I, like I told the kids, I, I don't know if I ever got a chance to tell him that, you know, or to thank him for that piece of advice, but that, that piece of advice really served me very well. And as the, the kids were talking about him being a teacher, you could ask him any question you wanted. He had a, a stack of doors. They had this old, old van, uh, and there was a stack of the side doors in the corner of their garage. And I remember one day I asked him, what are all those doors for? And he goes, oh, yeah, that was, those were my attempts to shrink the metal to take the dents out. And I'm like, oh, you can do that? And, you know, he tried to explain it to me, but I, you know, being a kid, one ear out the other, so. But, yeah, he was always the, willing to teach you. I, every time I came over and he was working on a car, it was, he was describing what he was doing, how he was doing it, what his intentions were. Uh, I remember came, I came over once where after he burned himself working on an Audi Fox, trying to straighten out the, the frame and everything, so. I just, you know. I'm just really going to miss him. Um, I'm just really glad that I got to know him, you know, know his kids and have the, the privilege of going to school with, you know. Uh, Dick is one of my best friends, and I know he wouldn't be who he is without his dad. And I'm just so thankful for that. feel so blessed. Thank you. I'm Dan Bauer, and my wife and family lived across the street from the Cliftons for many years there in Pataskla, and I also had the privilege of teaching their kids in school. I always have said I taught Susan everything she knows, <laughs> and she knows a lot. <laughs> but I want to tell you what good neighbors Bob and Hedico were. First of all, as Dick already said, his dad was quite a mechanic. I am not. <laughs> so, he, I think he volunteered, maybe I asked him, but anyway, that's unimportant at this point. He took care of our cars for many years. Well, I think the greatest feat of all was and you know, back in that day, cars rusted out pretty quickly. Well, I had a 1972 Dodge Dart, and I really thought the final had come for that car 
when the gas tank fell loose. But Bob said, no, we'll wire it up. So I drive, drove it quite a while with the gas tank wired up, which was a blessing for us. Another thing, our laundry equipment is in our basement. One day, we heard a cat meowing in the basement. So I went over and I said, Bob, I think there's a cat in our dryer. Sure enough, he came over, took it apart, took the vent out, and there was a cat. The cat was extremely wet. But guess what? It was still alive. So he saved a cat. And that was a blessing to us, too. His charges were much, 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 much less than service calls would have been for the dryer. As I recall, his charge was zero. But the best thing all, well, and Hedico often babysat our little girl if we both had to be gone or something. But the best story yet about what those two people did for us, Hedico really enjoyed digging in her yard. She liked to plant plants. She liked to plant trees. But she made kind of a bad mistake one time, and she planted a tree, a little tree, too close to their front sidewalk. Well, the tree grew, and it grew, and it grew. And you could guess the rest. The tree started to cause the sidewalk to hoof up. She said, you know, I'm going to have to dig that tree out because I don't want it to break up the sidewalk, but I don't want that tree to die. She said, would you like to have that tree? <laughs> and, I, and it was a pretty big tree. I said, oh yeah, it was pretty. It was one of these that turned red in the fall. I guess maybe it was a Japanese maple, uh, maple I don't know, but anyway. I said, but how would I ever get it dug up? Oh, she said, you don't need to worry about that. I will dig it. <laughs> Believe me, she dug that tree out, and it probably had a ball of dirt with it like this. And I said, Hedico, how are we going to move that tree? She said, don't worry about it, Bob will do it. <laughs> sure enough, he came home from work, she told him she wanted, oh, she also dug the hole in my yard. She really enjoyed digging. But anyway, he came home from work, and she told him she needed to have that tree moved from that hole to this hole. He attached the roof of an old Volkswagen to the back of a garden tractor, a riding mower or something, and he somehow got the tree on the Volkswagen lid, or roof, and pulled it across the street, planted it, and it lived for many, many years. As a matter of fact, we just had to have it uh, cut down in the last year, and I'm happy to report that now I have grass growing where that tree was. I was successful in doing that. <laughs> But I would have never had that tree have it not been for those people. They were truly the world's best neighbors. You kids were blessed with good parents. Thank you. Was the Korean War that reminded anyone who walked by that 
talking to the, all the buddies that he had at the church. Um, he joined our group whole again, and um, he made us whole again. There was no thing that came up that he would not volunteer to help with. There was no person that he wouldn't stay behind to talk to. Um, we just loved him to pieces. And, and just an, an aside, um, there's some artwork that Holigan, hi guys, um, there's some artwork that Holigan did, and it's uh, right before the nursery down there. And you've got to see your dad's and your grandpa's artwork down there. He said to me, he says, this is how to go, does it look like her? And I said, just a, just a spitting image. <laughs> We'll continue our service with our scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. So it feels appropriate to start the sermon the same way Bob often started conversations with me, especially when he was answering a question I'd put to him, with a very gentle but in fact emphatic, well... I heard that a lot. Well, well, we are gathered here to remember a man who was soft-spoken and kind, who was a patient teacher, as we already heard, a cons consistent friend who valued the gift of community, whether it was coffee with his coffee group, which apparently I learned he didn't even particularly think coffee was that great, but he drank it. It was necessary, or whether it was Senior Saints and Men's Chorale, or Whole Again, the grief group at Messiah. He was someone who was a friend, someone who knew what it was to be in community with one another. He was an honorable man, his children said. A teacher. He was always using opportunities to teach his kids. When Liz, I think, banged the, the car door somehow, I'm not, I, I wasn't quite sure how that happened, but it was in need of some body work. Bob kind of said, well, you're going to learn how to do body work now. That, that wasn't very smart. 
but I'll teach you something. Isn't that a gift? To have someone tell you, that wasn't very smart, but I'll teach you something. And every one of his kids knows basic maintenance or more, as I quickly learned how he, they could tell me stuff. They encouraged, he encouraged their curiosity. And I think that's because he had his own curiosity. I mean, that's what you need to be a tinkerer or a fixer, right? How does this work? And that was something I didn't actually know that much about Bob, the, the sort of fixer part of him, the, the problem solver who would look and say, I can figure this out. And the favorite story I heard when I was talking with the family was that while he was in the military and two trucks came to the base after having had a rear end accident, uh, where one was crushed on the back end and the other was crushed on the front end. Bob looked at it and I imagine him looking at it and going, well. <laughs> and he decided rather than, than giving up these two trucks and waiting months and months for them to be replaced, he was simply going to chop them in half. Yeah. I think my mouth dropped open. And take one good half of one, the other good half of the other, front and back, and weld them together. And it worked. And of course, he, he had to have some sort of explanation that they were down a truck, right? So he took the crushed half of the other and the crushed half of the other, welded it together, and said, here's the bad truck. <laughs> Replace that one. A non-sanctioned repair, as I was told. He was a fixer, a tinkerer, a problem solver. And he was one who was kind in that, and generous, caring, that he wasn't just worried about solving his problems, but solving other people's problems. And being prepared to, to be that kind and that generous, to carry that, to pay it forward. He'd keep an ignition resistor in his pocket, which I don't actually know what that is, y'all, but, but it was an ignition resistor specifically for Chryslers, because they notoriously went bad and broke down. And so anytime he saw a Chrysler at the side of the road after it had broken down, he would take that resistor out of his pocket, uh, pop out the, the one that had caused the trouble, do a quick fix, and then have them on their way, these strangers on the side of the road. And then he would go back to the store and buy a new one so that he could have it in his pocket, ready for the next unlucky person. He was generous, kind, honorable. That was Bob. And we see that in how he was with his wife. How he could problem solve for her sake, too. When she wasn't able to reach the cabinets in their new home because she was a small woman, kind of like how I'm standing on a platform right now, he made a platform to raise the entire floor of the kitchen so that she could reach the cabinets. And when she decided that she really did want a basement to their new home that they had already built without one, he said, well, I can do that. And this man dug out a basement under an existing house. He would solve the problems. He would show his love in the way he was a tinkerer and a fixer and a teacher. And we all could see and know the love for his wife, who he'd met on a blind date while serving in Japan, saving up enough money to return and marry her crossing boundaries set up by society arbitrarily, because that's what love does, it crosses boundaries. 
A love that held strong so that when she died, we all still saw it. I saw it even though I had never met her. I saw his love for her. Our office administrator, Linda, she told me this week, Bob couldn't start talking about her without his eyes welling up. He went to visit her grave every day, every morning. I imagine that in addition to that act of of staying there in the mornings, of visiting with her, as it being an act of grief, an act of desperately missing her, there is also something very hopeful about those visits. There is hope in those visits. It's a hope that in death, we are not fully separated from those we love. That in our own deaths, we are reunited with the love of those who have gone on before us. That's something I heard from Bob's kids. He's with mom now. And how in their grief, that gave them such hope. That peace that we heard in our song, it is well with my soul. That you say even while you grieve. United in the love of God, death, does not have the final say. Our scripture readings are full of that hope. The Jeremiah text that we read was read at his wife's funeral. I know the plans I have for you to give you a future with hope. The words from Paul in 1 Thessalonians, do not grieve as ones without hope which I always point out, it means we grieve, right? It's not that we don't grieve, we grieve. But we grieve with ones who have hope. The words of Jesus, do not let your hearts be troubled. I go and prepare a place for you. We call this service a service of celebration because it is full of hope. A hope seen in Bob's life and a hope seen in his death. That standing at a grave, grieving the loss of those we love, whether it be wives or sisters, fathers or brothers, friends, and knowing that in Christ the grave does not have the final say. In Christ, the place prepared for us is one of hope, one of love. The place prepared for us is one where our hearts is, are not troubled, where every tear will be wiped away. On the day Bob died, which was such a quick, sudden turn, a hard one, I visited with the family at the hospital, and that morning I had come from All Saints Sunday at our church. All Saints Sunday is a day when we remember specifically the way in which we have hope in our grief. We remember the promises that God gives us. That the songs we sing today and the prayers we lift up, the communion we will share, it is shared by every single saint that has ever gone by. Every saint who has died. And on that day, I came to know that Bob was now included. A feast that is shared from Japan to Ohio. A feast full of hope. And when we come forward for communion today, we still share that feast with Bob. Though he is not present with us now. He is part of the saints. All saints. So grieve today. Family. Friends. Body of Christ at Messiah. Grieve. Because he was a kind, 
honorable, good man. And we have learned so much from him. But we grieve with hope that while we live in this world without him, we grieve with hope because nothing, nothing, not even death, can separate us from the love of God, which means not even death can separate us from the love we share for Bob and for one another. Amen. Pray together uh, in our grief and for 
uh, the family of Bob. Uh, when you hear, Lord, in your mercy, you can respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints, all saints, in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth, and all those gathered here in this place, your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray that you would give courage and faith to all who mourn, and that you would give us a sure and certain hope in your loving care. We pray especially for Bob's children, for Dick, for Sue, for Liz, for spouses and grandchildren. God, may they know that courage and faith and hope, that casting all their sorrow on you, they, have may, they may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for this community represented here that we would surround this family to be a place of hope, a people of strength who will walk with them on this journey and that who would go out into the world that groans in grief and pain and love the way Bob loved with kindness and compassion with care and help. May we be a witness to your light and life. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as our uh, senior saints are going to come forward. Our senior saints and our men's uh, chorale, who Bob was a part of. They will be sharing a good gift of music.
I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And so we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our communion assistants will come forward. Um, just a word, please know that all are welcome to, this, uh, to the table of Christ. This, we don't consider this just a, simply a Lutheran meal. This is Jesus' meal. Um, and all, all are welcome to come and partake of the bread and wine. Uh, we'll have bread uh, towards the center. You'll come down the, the aisle, um, receive the bread, and then the wine is in uh, little cups, and we'll have trays. You can take those. Uh, in the center of that tray is grape juice as well, if you would like grape juice. body of Christ given for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Bob's one request for this service was to play this song by Irving Berlin. Sayonara, and it's from the movie Sayonara with Marlon Brando, um, a movie that uh, with Marlon Brando in the, the title or key role uh, about a serviceman, military serviceman, who falls in love and marries a Japanese woman at a time uh, when it was illegal uh, in the midst of prejudice and racism. Um, so we're going to uh, spend some time to sit here and hear the song that Bob loved. spirit of sayonara. Let us commend Bob Clifton to the mercy of God, our maker and our redeemer.
into your hands, O merciful Savior. We commend your servant, Bob. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Just a, a word about uh, how we'll uh, complete our, our service today. Uh, we do have a graveside service that the family will be uh, following out, um, and you are welcome to join us there, where we will uh, complete our celebration of Bob's life. Um, and then you are welcome to come and uh, come back for the luncheon in the fellowship hall, which is uh, right uh, to the right as you exit the sanctuary. Um, down the steps, you'll see the big hall there, uh, where we'll have a light meal for you to continue to, to share memories and thoughts um, with family and friends and continue to celebrate Bob's life. Uh, as we will fin we'll sing our last hymn, um, and the family will follow us out towards the last verse, and then you may follow us uh, to your cars. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. I invite you to stand as we sing this song of hope, Blessed Assurance 638. Mm -hmm. 